it is a uh, one lakh crores uh, turnover company. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I think after that uh, I superannuated mm-hmm. in two zero one seven. Then I joined uh, uh, Symbiosis Skill University right. as a director of management. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I have, I have a combination of the both so industry and uh, academics. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm symbolic of what people say to be industry academia uh, interface. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I know where the soup pinches as per the academics goes. I also know where the soup pinches as per the industry goes, and uh, work on many international consulting assignments. Uh, and uh, that is how I can place myself. About this business school, let me say that it is one of the kind in the country. And uh, this uh, business school was uh, uh, promoted by NTPC because our core value says we must be a learning organization. Mm-hmm. So we have been into capacity building. We have done many activities, but then NTPC as a company uh, first made a foray into the energy sector kind of a learning. So we are into organization learning. In that, uh, it uh, promoted this business school known to be NTPC School of Management. And then we have a very strong collaboration hmm. with I M Ahmedabad. So hmm. let me say that uh, two great brands, two mega brands, N T P C and I M Ahmedabad, has uh, co-created uh, this uh, business school, uh, and that too in a very niche area of the energy management. So we do everything uh, in the area of the energy management. The entire value chain we cover. So many more interesting things I'll try to take up uh, when the question comes. But let me start with saying, uh, let me take your first question so that I can start uh, moving on. Uh, so basically, I wanted to also ask, like you know, uh, being the director of the NTPC School of Business, uh, how do you help the budding in, uh, energy managers that excelling in their careers? Okay, now let me go back to some uh, a brief good backdrop. Uh, must have seen yesterday that. Uh, uh prime minister modi has uh, talk of the life it is a uh, lifestyle for uh, uh, your um, uh, environment so right. in that uh, scheme uh, he has said very clearly uh, when i talk to my students i must be talking to students who are you know with parents around uh, in our home we try to put our ac at 18 but still try to cover ourselves by a by a blanket so why can't we make it at 24 with the optimal use uh, for the electricity Then he said that go to the gym. Why don't take a walk? So small things in the life matters the most. And uh, from this small example, I try to try to explore to a bigger example. Now starting from the Kyoto Protocol to the latest uh, COP26 in Paris, when uh, Prime Minister said that we'll have a net zero by 2070. Now coming back home, it is a huge mandate for the all the companies. Now every company is now trying to come away from the fossil fuel, and uh, means uh, that is a attempt like, and massively historically having the coal fired stations like, but very increasingly and very aggressively we are moving towards the solar hydro companies, Terry Hydro and uh, Nipco in northeast. Just to ma- make my portfolio more respectable, so ma- massively we are going towards the solar. So it is not a one story of everybody are moving to the green area, and that is the kind of revolution happening in this sector. So I'll try to g- give more examples. But uh, coming back to your question, I think the backdrop is being said. So uh, my, I'm a, uh, I was the dean of the school. Now I'm a professor, a senior professor. So, uh, so the, uh, in that capacity, uh, we have done many things over here. It is not that you teach a student as a marine student or something called energy. It is also taking through a journey, because once you try to say that um, uh, you finish your MBA, then you t- talk of a target only. So target is something which you start and you finish, but a journey goes on. So in that sense, uh, for us it is a journey. So anyone gets admitted to my business school actually sets him to the journey. Throughout his life, I think he'll be 
protecting the environment net zero is the ambition sustainability so many things will be in and that is what our course curriculum is all about now when i talk of the kind of business school i was believe not my business school or any business in the world if you take practically you say it is best in class or world class people say world class if two things are okay uh, you are a world class business school if you are best in class faculty and best in class curriculum if these two are happening then then your business school is great and fortunately since we have a collaboration with iim ahmedabad uh, both our own faculty and the professors uh, of iim ahmedabad uh, you know by the time i am talking to each other there should be two iim ahmedabad professor taking class here offline because now um, uh, education is offline they are taking classes so so uh, that makes the faculty part very strong and curriculum you cannot uh, it is uh, actually seen to be believed we have very cutting edge curriculum uh, people might be saying it for the saying sake but since we have the that collaboration with i am ahmedabad they try to see that our curriculum is an industry led and very result oriented so so anybody who gets admitted over here by naturally by default is exposed to the not only the uh, who's who of the entire sector energy sector but also have a hands on uh, kind of uh, curriculum in hand which is mostly industry led right so so moving on to my next question so uh, like energy sector in india has always seen a gap in demand and supply in your opinion how can ntpc school of business and its students play a role in planning and execution to eradicate this gap what do you think sir <clears throat> yeah very nice very nice now uh, there is a small myth i want to uh, you know explore now i think uh, five years back or uh, maybe seven years back we have been talking of a energy starved nation today we are a energy surplus nation this critical information is not uh, with everybody since we are in the sector we know it very well the amount of production in the country of the energy is more than the consumption today so that's a very good thing happened to this country so anybody who is trying to say that we are energy star please correct him saying that we are a energy surplus uh, country now so much so that we are uh, sir, you know supplying power to bangladesh uh, uh, you know uh, sri lanka uh, and and the uh, arjuning countries like uh, so so in the, in that context i want to say that uh, being a energy surplus company then then uh, a country then how come the, the in the typical villages uh, you forget about the rich states who are 100% electrification then how does it uh, doesn't uh, reach over there usually when i fly and i or i travel by train my co passenger will be asking this question quite often he said oh you are from ntpc and uh, uh, how come we are not getting power in my village that's a very awkward question but i always try to take them through a bit of answer i say that sir uh, at the generation level this is a good learning event for uh, those are listening to me at the generation level we are surplus then energy get transmitted you cannot store energy now battery has not uh, matured that much uh, so so uh, future uh, 10 years down the line we might like to store a huge amount of energy that will change the entire activity in the energy sector but as of now let us assume that you have to sell immediately so that is it is transmitted are the discom that is called the distribution company that is the that is the company who get electricity at home the company who pay that is known to be distribution company actually the entire kind of activity is not very high end at that level so we are still have a lot of uh, tnd loss we still have uh, theft we have still have many thing uh, going on at that grassroots level so what does it mean it means that we have should have uh, students who necessarily get into companies and should be strategic thinkers so i can give a good example let us say i take my people who come for short term programs to tata power ddl uh, there is a delhi distribution company which is the mecca and medina of the you know uh, uh, the benchmarking practices in the distribution sector so when i take them over there they could see that uh, they have a scada system in hand which monitors online how much demand and supply and they have a good uh, metering system 
they have big uh, apps where you can pay uh, they are very consumer friendly they reach out to you quite often if there is a, some problem at your end you didn't pay somebody will try to talk to you so they take all preemptive actions and they educate you like i'm saying that uh, you should put your ac at 24 is is something like uh, tata has been doing uh, for a long time so through their education program they do it so it is a uh, is an eye opener as uh, for, for many uh, in ahmedabad uh, you know the distribution is fantastic when i was a student of i am ahmedabad that time i know there is no power failure but the kind of pricing is a bit high so what the uh, i have seen some 20 uh, 20 years back Uh, as a uh, more than that as a student uh, now the uh, entire country has not been able to rise up to that occasion so what what does it mean it means that we have some center of excellence excellence in isolated ways not in the country level so it also means that who will do it it means you will do it my students will do it. so in that sense those who come to my course and they try to make a mark as i told you that it is a journey for them because they go to the Uh, go as a as a service uh, provider to the country, so they go back and become strategic thinkers. Where they join these distribution companies uh, at the top level and try to make changes. So if I try to think uh, in the future, like um, ten years down the line, we should have a uh, much much supply of the energy managers in the country who will head on try to take take this uh, kind of distribution or any kind of uh, um, um, uh, illness. that is that is affecting uh, my sector so that is why i say that uh, uh, my school is unique in that way uh, there are more also coming uh, i could see some uh, distance learning courses uh, in the energy management there is uh, some few institutes being set up but we are unique that uh, we make a dent uh, on uh, with the hands on kind of activities right so so i do believe like ntpc is working towards it and keep working towards it so moving on to my next question uh, so how do you try to bring in practical approach towards subjects and make it industry oriented very right uh, so i think um, i uh, told you about the curriculum now curriculum is administered through a pedagogy so pedagogy is as strong as the curriculum like so you can't say that no no i will have a best in class curriculum but only teach in the class so as you all know that uh, i am ahmedabad is a 100% case based uh, approach towards pedagogy which means there is no lecture over there i am calcutta follows both they have a lecture system they have a case system as well and i am bangalore also have a mix of the two but i am ahmedabad is 100% case study so uh, it means that uh, my teacher uh, that time i'm saying uh, professor uh, im pande was wrote and written this great finance book that time he'll come to the class and uh, i'm giving one example only he'll come to the class he say oh uh, guys i have distributed this uh, case on the hul some uh, 15 days back uh, i hope you must have read so let us start with the discussion so and he starts the discussion he goes to the white board and uh, you know everybody discusses thread by putting the different angles of the same case uh, it is a thick case of 50 pages with all annexes of the balance sheet profit and loss account so uh, they we try to uh, argue it out of the working capital uh, kind of uh, activities uh, in the company then uh, when everybody get adjusted and the white board is full he will start his uh, own kind of remark uh, he will go on writing he will not disturb us uh, as a teacher he has to listen to me so he goes on writing at the end he comes out with very brilliant uh, uh, ideas about what companies do he'll straight straight try to quote from his own consulting assignment uh, which he has done for hul for uh, uh, for um, uh, different companies and he'll say that uh, this is what the practice is and for the first time i uh, came across a term called negative working capital which is not in the book he he'll try to tell me that um, uh, hul practices negative working capital so i am taking this example very consciously i am trying to take it's like to say that when you try to make it through a case analysis take the class in the case analysis or case study become a integral part of the curriculum then it is called a experiential learning so so as you go through the case study you are experiencing the this student experiencing uh, the kind of uh, situation so his decision making abilities or critical thinking goes up very high so it is a live scenario 
he is exposed to the hands on practices of a of a uh, hul like i i was i got exposed to negative working capital which is not negative in those years uh, when everybody else uh, may not be knowing this one so because in a bookies uh, environment we never come to know it is a practice so that is the beauty of a case study so 70 of the case study percent of the entire curriculum is in our case is driven through case study and energy sector we try to bring in all global practices all the global energy utilities when you go to the airports fly by that uh, airport you must be come by ng now it is ng so we have many companies korea we have come we are chinese china companies we have many companies in hydro china companies uh, um, as uh, very good so so many companies try to take uh, as example just to build the global practices so my my students are the day one that are exposed to the entire energy scenario global energy scenario and he talks of uh, a new concept known to be hydrogen economy hydrogen economy nobody teaches actually we teach in the business school because that's the future when these batteries will be having its own kind of life cycle then i think i think uh, um, very few in the country probably uh, may, not, may be knowing it but may not be knowing the in depth like you know hydrogen is going to be a, the next big thing as far as the energy is concerned so we have already in practice ntpc is a very uh, not it's a very conservative company we don't try to uh, boast much rather we are we think of the uh, doables so uh, very soon we will be having hydrogen plants almost every company is going through towards that ongc ioc gale so hydrogen going to the future and and what is the output output is water only so so that is a very uh, beautiful uh, uh, what is the risk the risk is it is uh, slightly uh, volatile so uh, anyway but technology is uh, available for the same so we talk of the hydrogen economy so entire gamut of the things we try to do and best thing is that pedagogically we strongly believe you know uh, simulation sensitive analysis case analysis in the uh, in the class and uh, and something more i'll, I'll try to say uh, when the things uh, i i'm supposed to uh, talk more later right so uh, so my next question to you would be uh energy sector is a growing sector what do you believe could be the forthcoming aspects which can prove to be a boom to this industry yeah i just now try to end my sentence uh, before this uh, uh you know uh, question mm -hmm. so i and it said that it is a hydrogen economy that is going to be the future like so that. let me take you back something very good i am trying to take you a very good canvas across the world now you believe in me that uh, uh, in the next uh, i was trying to say 10 years it might happen in the next 5 years evs will be plenty on the road all of you are listening to me uh, will be experiencing this one in the next 5 years in the previous um, i think one year back i used to make a position of 10 years but then they weigh the the fast uh, the, the 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 kind of fastness the uh, companies are moving the uh, uh, vehicles are uh, these companies are tata motors hindu oil everybody is moving uh, kia are moving towards that uh, it will uh, next 5 years will be a great great revolution i put a mark of 2030 when evs will be much in the road and every family will be trying to drive uh, uh, kind of uh, ev so if the uh, ev is happening then uh, will the charging station be far away no so it is a hen and egg relationship so once you have the ev on the roads every power uh, you know when you fill up the petrol uh, petrol pumps will be having a charging station as well and this will be fast charging it means that it will take hardly 5 uh, minutes to charge so every 5 minutes like we are putting the gas today what is the waiting time is almost like uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, every 5 minutes you charge and go charge and go charge and go and with the batteries uh, moving on very fast uh, when i say battery i am uh, try to be um uh, telling we have to in the sense that batteries as of now also not very environment friendly <clears throat> so when moving towards lithium batteries the efficiency very high uh, but then uh, i think a lot of research is going on so a lot of research is going on towards the green batteries so in the in the next 5 years also you'll be having green batteries which will be supporting uh, the <clears throat> the uh, kind of ev vehicles then one more aspect i must tell you is the solar 
solar it is not that you don't know about this thing. everybody knows about solar and everybody uh, has an experience of the solar uh, uh, plants today we are going hugely towards the solar and very uh, this is one piece of information the price of the solar has come down it has come down below uh, this economics i'm telling you uh, this has come down below your coal fired stations from the coal fired stations in the range of uh, uh, 2.5 to 3 uh, hydro are almost like average of 4 to 5 uh, you, can you imagine that the uh, solar power uh, is coming down to uh, 2 rupees 1.99 to precise ntpc has done it so 1.99 so what will be the economics like now given a chance for a producer if for a producer now will be tempted to go for a solar rather than any fossil fuel kind of plants or any naphtha where the international volatility is around so when you try to put up a solar plant obviously it is not only very environment friendly it also try to make use of the sun yeah, can you imagine that uh, who is the who are the countries the best in the world like uh, one might say usa those things uh, are there but germany germany and european countries where this sun uh, rays are not so high that in the lead in the whole world uh, each each uh, uh, each house in a germany is a uh, is a energy surplus scenario they sell electricity and they earn money we pay money they earn money so so because the every rooftop solar uh, not only the consumption is sufficient enough to have their own kind of uh, consumption but the extra is uh, they send it to the grid and they earn money so when the india also the revolution happens we have many kind of solar now now we are talking of the solar thermal solar thermal so many things are uh, coming up so fast technology is changing so fast i think uh, that is the usp of uh, my student so my student not only try to uh, think about it he also does it in fact if you come to my campus there is a solar power coffee machine so so uh, you take my parents so come here they take coffee which is solar power so the many things can happen this is just to uh, uh, make your imagination work so solar is the future that is happening in a big way so that is how i am trying to see that uh, my kind of activities uh, the entire energy canvas is changing so fast uh, as i said earlier energy sector is going through a revolution so question is today whether you are a part of it or you are, you are not a part of it. that is the question that is the choice you have to make but uh, if you make it you know uh, i should not be boasting of myself uh, last year my placements are uh, 100% this year also 65 are all percentage have been placed last year placement 25 lakhs can you imagine this this year everybody my, my ey kpmg mckinsey's uh, pwc uh, are making b lines uh, for getting my students uh, last year my uh, cmd asked me some uh, two students who didn't have people here so, so uh, I have to ask some two uh, students to resign and join my CMD office. So, so uh, uh, don't take this as my kind of conversing here. I'm saying that the demand is so much. So, the demand is so much that uh, we have hugely scarcity of manpower, skilled manpower. So, I think there is a survey, there is a research which goes on to say that in the next 10 years, the dearth of the uh, energy professional will be exponential. So, what does it mean? If, the, if my demand is uh, uh, going through, my supply is uh, going through arithmetic means, a arithmetical progression, my, my uh, demand will be uh, geometrical progression. So the, so the gap would be quite high. So, so uh, you as very budding uh, managers or aspiring to be budding managers, uh, you should be in a place where the demand is so high and there is no match to energy sector. By joining the energy sector, you actually do two things. You have your own degree, Second, you serve the country. So I say that till you retire from this job, you are contributing to the, uh, the cause, like the soldiers, they fight in the uh, border and protect my country. So also you are like a soldier. Every energy manager is a soldier. He contributes to the, directly to, to the country. We can't have this meeting if there's no power. If, if there's no power, I can't do anything. I cannot move. I cannot uh, go out. Uh, you know, uh, uh, nothing, nothing is possible. So that is why I think uh, this is very important, and whole world is uh, world is waking up, massive. And uh, I I am not a daily man, uh, things. Um, uh, see, you know, there will not be Antarctica tomorrow, there will not be any Greenland tomorrow. 
so so uh, small countries might vanish who are uh, who are like you know uh, like you uh, um, uh, like uh, i's noting the name like uh, bangladesh sri lanka are at threat they are threat so so uh, never know actually small islands will uh, simply vanish right so uh, ac drain is happening all of, all of these you know i'll not tell you. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right, sir. Right. Uh, definitely. Uh, moving on to the next question, sir. Uh, how does your department or college, per se, enhance the skills of the faculty and prepares the uh, uh, prepares them according uh, to the industry standards? Yeah, I think uh, my, my faculty are uh, very very strong background. Uh, there are people who are in the minister ministerial committees uh, who are uh, who are from terry who are from isc bangalore uh, i am from ntpc um, one have very strong uh, solar uh, background so uh, my faculties are uh, not only um, uh, very highly trained very high end professionals uh, like i am having at least uh, three four consulting assignments with me uh, they would be having uh, one or two positive on an average Uh, every faculty has consulting assignments. Uh, Ministry of Power has given us 20 crores money to uh, to save the future power market. So our power market uh, is uh, day high. Means uh, uh, looking at the demand, uh, I have to declare my capacity for tomorrow. But this will take me through. Let us say, come this is winter season setting in. Uh, come June uh, 2023 in Delhi, it will be reaching 7,000 megawatt. The kind of demand like. now um, uh, so so delhi government can come to ntpc my company or any hydro company let us say pure hydro company in sikkim uh, let us take a name like tista urja so they will go to tista urja uh, and say that uh, can you supply me this much of power this units of power uh, and uh, on uh, 31st uh, june uh, 30th june 2023 so the price is fixed uh, fixed and the uh, quantum is fixed so that is things uh, are being taken care of uh, by this uh, school very high end research high end consultancy and can you believe that uh, from the day one uh, we we didn't blink our eye we took this uh, students to the nearest uh, uh, plant called dadri so before they set on the course like energy uh, curriculum they should see a plant and shortly will be taken to a hydro plant so so in that they saw the gas plant they saw everything they, they have a live what is called a turbine what is called a boiler what is called a generator how will it be getting produced so all these things are being uh, uh, seen uh, fast then we took the class with so then mostly they are engineers 98% 99% are engineers so they also are very happy so we leave no stone unturned to see that the hands on things get into the curriculum fast so what i would say one is case study one is practical exposure you go to the plants see the plants Feel the plants, ask to see, see how the things get uh, uh, generated. So you are uh, almost in the value chain. You have experience with. So that is the things why it is different from any other curriculum, and it is very skill based. We develop skills, uh, very very high end uh, uh, skills like. Yeah. Right, sir. Right, sir. So uh, my next question would be: What are the opportunities? for the gantere to the industry of exposure or uh, do they also get any student exchange program for the universities abroad or in india yeah we have this um, uh, exchange program for executive batch uh, for the present uh, mba 2 years mba we are planning to have right sir our students uh, go to uh, they go to uh, now now the international immersion is on so they are uh, they are going to escp paris uh, that business school uh, so they will be taking them to italy uh, paris uh, mostly european uh, they will also have field visits so if i am talking of a rooftop solar in germany they will have a see that how does the household try to sell power instead of paying for the power bill and they will uh, they are going to hungary uh, and then they are going to many places to have a international exposure and is when i say international exposure is not a classroom situation mm-hmm. they'll have a lot of field which they'll see that how their their hydro functions see right. that how their nuclear uh, things also function so so when they say nuclear power uh, how uh, 
uh, they are trying to protect uh, this uh, nuclear power technology uh, so that nothing uh, happens like in russia you have a huge explosion uh, how the safeguards are taking place so they mm-hmm. also see that yeah right sir so my last question would be uh, uh, for you like what valuable advice would you like to give to the students uh, to them to have a prosperous career ahead yeah uh, i i was trying to say that uh, uh, broadly uh, we are in a vuka uh, environment so vuka environment is the volatile uncertain uh, ambiguous uh, kind of environment uh, which is different from uh, when i was a student so I, as a student i remember that only ambassador and fiat uh, you have two choices in the automobiles uh, in ac hardly one or two uh, in in uh, um, air conditioner again one or two uh, so tv one or two uh, so so everything was very confined now today not only of choices many players so complex is very complexity is very high so in today's environment every student has to be more like you know high on analytics uh, you know that ai and ml has uh, you know beautifully uh, integrated to the uh, uh, management curriculum uh, so w- wherever you are you might be in finance hr or it or any domain you have to have this uh, as, as a sugar coated uh, mba uh, and if you don't have maybe that you don't click in the mark so apart from the uh, usual skills you have uh, let us say you want to uh, make a mark Uh, in the finance area uh, in in uh, let us say uh, take for example banking or financial services or latest is called fintech so fintech uh, if you are very good you quickly land on a job so uh, if you have uh, exposed into crypto uh, kind of uh, um, uh, scenario their dynamics uh, you are very high uh, on the job end so what i mean to say that uh, get yourself skill in whatever domain you are Uh, so if i am in energy management people also are in the banking people are in the retails people people are in the digital marketing so many domains are open for you but this is very basic uh, ai ml is very basic r programming python uh, you don't have to uh, think about this thing you got to have whether the uh, business school is running this course or not then go for the uh, uh, course era and have these degrees from them or any short term courses that is very important and uh, uh, combined to that advanced excel is very important now you will ask me that how come we have very good placements at our business school because uh, professor sanjay verma from i am ahmedabad teaches them analytics so so uh, he could be ranked in the first uh, five in the country uh, so so person of his stature professor of that stature teaches them analytics so when this uh, consulting firms uh, come to recruit they all see that students are very good in the energy domain but they are also very good at the uh, they excel in the analytics uh, python and uh, r programming the first uh, first term means we start with that so that is one very critical skill and uh, your uh, i uh, told you about the strategic thinking uh, problem solving uh, these are must be everybody should be telling about this critical thinking but this uh, this uh, must be true what i add to what people say is that you must be very high in the soft skills so soft skills are uh, very good for you uh, i think i strongly believe in communication uh, you are being high on the emotional quotient and and nowadays uh, if you are going to a school like watton howard a business school i think your social quotient has to be very high so be with the social agenda that should be one portfolio the social portfolio so if uh, uh, you are competing for the harvard business school and epidas is con- uh, also competing with you and you have a very social focus your portfolio is very good you are being attached to the ngo or you are part of the teach india uh, campaign of the times of india or uh, put differently my student get into ngo uh, energy sector uh, so so uh, that that is how you try to build your uh, usp in your cv so that is uh, a must for you and uh, otherwise also um, uh, you know having a social focus will help you in the career so uh, as you grow up in the ladder it will help in the help in the career so there are many things to do it is only that you have to take a call what to do so uh, like my company adopts uh, many many villages 
so we take our students over there and um, we have a very special emphasis on the education of the girl child so we also take my students to those uh, villages where this is happening they see that uh, exclusive uh, kind of skill building for the girl children those who are not passed uh, 10th uh, the necessary scholarship to them to pass 10th at least then 12th then some skill is given to them so we have a focus on the uh, educating the girl child so that is happening as remote as as our khargon khargon uh, plant in uh, uh, near indore uh, we have huge uh, every plant every plant has a kind of budget so uh, sustainability csr uh, these are very important things and um, even if you want to make a career in the sustainability you can uh, pass a certificate course along with mba and all these uh, consulting firms will eager to take you you must ask me that uh, what is that thing uh, this consulting firm come and take uh, my students it, it is basically energy they know but they take it for the sustainability because every every company has a very huge mandate as you all know that 2% of the profit uh, should be spent on the csr now it is not spending on the csr it is audited so who is auditing this the auditors are the uh, big four or the consulting firms so you will be part of that auditing team so so uh, this we take uh, we uh, teach them in the class so that is a part of the curriculum and since we are a uh, energy focused uh, uh, kind of business school we also try to uh, teach them about the uh, coal gas uh, um, hydrogen economy i told so many things which uh, are in the total value chain so uh, that is what uh, my take is that is should be very contemporary with what the uh, uh, you know companies demand now uh, i am from the industry and i i always say that uh, everything you do should be industry led or what i tell to be industry led curriculum so let let uh, industry people be a part of your curriculum building they will give you new ideas and the recent practices so all these benchmark practices of the industry should be a part of the curriculum and you should try to if it is not available within your com- uh, your business school try to do a certificate course on that mm-hmm. but never think of six sigma let us say uh, we teach six sigma to our students now now uh, we take them to a yellow belt uh, now uh, with a yellow belt in hand when they pass out they go for the black belt mm-hmm. now when you say that uh, every tom dick and harry is having a simple uh, mba degree but i am having a mba degree with a six sigma Uh, so uh, see the kind of value you add mm-hmm. so uh, in my school uh, you, we are energy focused we say everything and energy we teach apart mm-hmm. from that we teach them analytics teach them ai ml we teach them uh, six sigma we teach them many things which are uh, industry wants and we uh, make them very customer focus this is a very good thing i'm telling you mm-hmm. that uh, are you are you are is your curriculum customer focus who is the customer industry the comes customer so right. so uh, look look how the how the industry also do uh, it during the covid time this one one example i'll try to stop over there mm-hmm. uh, when covid is on uh, i think that time uh, every automobile uh, auto sector were into losses so it went for a spin so revenue was uh, close a loss they are making close losses in that uh, scenario how come kia was making a profit how come kia was uh, loaded with uh, uh 50000 orders uh so i was amazed so i made a small, small search over there i said how come it is happening uh-huh. so you are all, all very young minds uh, listening to me look what kia did so kia tried to look for a uh, car uh, which is meant for the internet savvy um, uh, tech savvy uh, young minds like you so uh, what it say it is it say that uh, i am building car where internet inside so uh-huh. they went by caption internet uh-huh. inside uh-huh. Uh, so you do everything inside the, inside the car uh-huh. uh, which otherwise uh, you would have done in the industry so uh-huh. by uh, then mg came so mg came ai inside i uh-huh. could see one mg which said that ai inside uh-huh. so these things are the very young minds they want so uh-huh. if you g- become uh, customer focus it is good for you and uh, very rightly said and by me earlier also today even uh, just now i'm saying my business school is supremely customer focused hmm. we always in uh, not only being a corporate business school hmm. we are in the industry we also hmm. have other people in our fold very hmm. assiduously religiously try uh, hmm. to become customer focused and bring the industry 
uh, wisdom built into my career thank right you. sir thank you so much thank you for taking your valuable time for us and speaking on this topic and i'm sure uh, you know we have been uh, we have been trying to bridge that gap between our students and our educators and i think this is going to help our students a lot you know uh, to be career focused and uh, get guided on the same thank you so much sir thank you for taking out time and speak on this topic thank you so very much sir thank you